I'm a leader of my Duke and I podcast and hope everybody is doing wonderful today. And if you're seeing the show for the first time and you like the show, please subscribe, like, and share and hit the notification bell so when an episode comes out, you'll be the first to know. Well, <laughs> I have been reading you all's comments on my last video I posted and you guys said that the palace will never condemn what Jeremy Claxon said. And uh, it's interesting that the palace has spoken up against injustice for other people, but now it's their own family and they cannot find the courage to speak up. But I get it. <laughs> I get why they cannot speak up because the fact of the matter is it seems like it's the media that is running the UK and not the government. And also, we know that the media has so much dirt on the palace and the palace has so much skeletons in their closet that they're not willing to condemn the media. It might just backfire on them. So we get it. We get it. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, the Sun has apologized for the article that Jeremy Claxton wrote and personally I do not accept it as an apology. I look at it as an excuse just like how Jeremy Claxton excused his behavior when he posted his so-called apology on Twitter. So here's what it said. It said in last Sunday's Sun, Jeremy Claxton wrote a comment article about the Duchess of Sussex. It provoked a strong response and led to a large number of complaints to IPSO, the Independent Press Regulator. In a tweet earlier this week, Jeremy said he had made a clumsy reference to a scene in Game of Thrones which had gone down badly with a great many people and he was horrified to have caused so much hurt. He also said he would be more careful in the future. Columnists' opinions are their own, but as a publisher, we realize that with free expression comes responsibility. We at The Sun regret the publication of this article, and we are sincerely sorry. The article has been removed from our website and archives. The Sun has a proud history of campaigning from Help for Heroes to Jabs Ami and Who Cares Wins and over 50 years of working in partnership with charities. Our campaigns have helped change Britain for the better. Working with our readers, The Sun has helped to bring about new legislation on domestic abuse, provided beds in refugees, closed harmful loopholes in the law and empowered survivors of abuse to come forward and seek help. We will continue to campaign for good causes on behalf of our readers in 2023. Now there are several things in here I disagree with. One of them talking about how Jeremy apologized on Twitter the other day. As I said, it was not an apology. It was an excuse. It was not sincere because he blamed his nasty behavior. He blamed the vile article on Game of Thrones. Now, another thing they said is that um, he'll be more careful in the future. Now, Jeremy Claxon has been a person that has said whatever he wanted in the past. He even referenced one time that Americans were stupid and fat and he has gotten away with these things. So I don't think he's going to be careful at all in the future. Now, the next thing that got me was when they said columnists' opinions are their own, but as a publisher, we realize that with free expression comes responsibility. Now, I have a problem with this statement here because yes, it is Jeremy's opinion and he's responsible for it. But at the same time, as I said, they allowed him to, um, to write an article like this and to have it published in the newspaper. That should have never happened. The editor should have stopped it. 
unless if they agreed with what he was saying. Secondly, they had an opportunity to take it down and they did not take it down. They had it up on Saturday, it stayed up on Sunday, and it's only on Monday they took it down, which means that they loved the attention that it was getting. They loved the press that um, they were getting. So they're not sincere at all about it, and they are not regretful of it at all. So all of that to me is not enough. What I want to see, um, what I want to see them do is to fire Jeremy. What I want to see ITV do is to fire Jeremy. And what I want to see happen is that nobody advertise on these publication and on ITV until Jeremy Claxton is fired, period. Um, so along with um, the Reverend Al Shapton, Peter Herbert, who is also uh, an activist and a former judge, he said, given the scale and degree of race hate crime targeted at the Princess of Sussex, and the previous offensive conduct of Jeremy Claxon, who is an individual who knows exactly what he's saying and the likely consequences of his editorial being published in the Sun newspaper, there's clear evidence of intent. So what this former judge is saying, that there's clear evidence of intent that he intended to incite violence against Megan. And this, the, the, um, the former judge said that he urged the Met Police to act against Jeremy Claxon. Now, this is what the Met Police said. And this Met Police, now his name is Sir Mark Rowley. Now, he has a sir in front of his name. And I know he got that sir from the palace. You know, because that's how those things work in England. <laughs> I may be wrong, but that's everybody has a sir in England, and I don't know, they get those things from the palace. And another thing again, too, we cannot trust the Met Police. This is the same Met Police who had a group chat with racist and vile things about Prince Harry and Meghan. So how can we trust the police? You ask me. Now, this is also the same police that declined to provide security for Harry and his family when they're in the UK. So they cannot be trusted. Let us listen to what the um, commissioner of police um, said. I think there's a, a line to be drawn, um, Nick. It's not for the police to get involved in anything that's about, is something ethical, is it moral, is it, is it proper, is it offensive? Um, the, the legal lines are only crossed when, uh, generally when things are said that um, are intended or likely to stir up um, or incite violence. Um, I don't think this is one of those cases, but of course we'll keep a close eye on it. You heard what he said? He doesn't think that this was intended to incite violence. He said he doesn't think this is one of those cases, but he'll keep a close eye on it. Who can trust the Met Police? Certainly not Megan and certainly not Harry. Because we've seen time and time how they have behaved and responded when it came to um, Harry and Megan. We've seen their racist jokes We've seen the, the vile things that they have said. Um, now, what is interesting is here that this same Met Police, after Prince Andrew was accused of pedophilia, um, he, was, he still got his security after he was accused and he paid 12 million dollars to make the case go away he still got security until recently his security was pulled they were willing to pay 
his security, but they couldn't provide it for Harry and Meghan. So you could see the bias here. There's a lot of bias in here. Um, you cannot trust the police. You cannot trust the palace. You cannot trust the government because the government is not running the country in the United Kingdom. And you certainly cannot trust the media. Who can you trust? Who can the UK people go to if they cannot go to these very institutions that are supposed to protect them? It makes no sense. <laughs> I am telling you, the more I read about the, the United Kingdom, the more I put the pieces of the puzzles together, is more I am understanding that this country is going to the dogs. I feel sorry for the people who live there. Everywhere has its problems. The United States have its problems too. But there are checks and balances here in the United States. And I don't know what are the checks and balances in the United Kingdom. It's just a weird place. But anyways, guys. <laughs> oh, yes. One more thing I wanted to leave you guys with is that um, don't forget Prince Harry's book is coming up. And then one of the things they said, there are no plans for newspaper serialization of Spear. Prince Harry's memoir. His publisher, Trans World, has confirmed the book will be published on January 10th and we know that Harry's first interview is going to be on the 9th and it's going to be with Anderson Cooper. I'm looking forward to that on CNN and <laughs> now they um, publish the first banknote with the image of Chucky and my question here is that they have perfectly good banknotes circulating in England why, during these difficult times, would they want to scrap all of this and put new money into circulation, banknotes into circulation, just so that it would have Chucky's face on it, his likeness on it? It makes no sense. I don't know who is thinking over there in England. As I said, this is a mess, a messy, messy place. People are going through such hardship right now, and you're telling me you're wasting money to put a worthless man like that on your bank notes, a man that is always making deals with people, unscrupulous deals with people, picking up bags of money, cannot stand up for anything. I am confused. You guys, please ex make it make sense. Just make it make sense. That's all I have to say. Anyways, guys, hopefully... We'll have something nice to report next time. And hopefully Megan will put out some Megan and Harry will put out something soon and we'll have something beautiful to talk about next time. Bye and take care. <laughs>